everybody. Uh, my name is Chip Russo from Zephyr. Um, Zephyr is a technology company, and we focus on contextual targeting video for brands. And we do that to try and match the active mindset of the users. And we think content's the best way to do that. But before we begin today, I want to just take a moment and thank this community. Because it's a really special community, and not only because we get together during Sundance and Elevate in July, but because we collaborate all year long. And I think we do that because we have a big challenge that's in front of us right now. We're trying to solve a big problem, essentially. And you know, when you think about video, right now, there's, a, you know, there's tons of video. There's more video being consumed today than ever has been before. And that's not changing. It's growing year over year. But what we, so as a, as a storyteller, that's, that's an amazing thing, right? We've got all of this community out there looking for content. But the challenge is a lot of the growth in that area is coming from subscription services like Kulu and Netflix and Amazon. And so what I thought we'd do today to sort of give back to this community and collaborate even more is to bring up a brand uh, that's been doing this incredibly well for decades, and that's Adidas. So a lot of you guys probably have your own special Adidas moment. Uh, I'm sure at the very least when you think of Adidas, something comes to mind. Mine was uh, Run DMC when they performed in Madison Square Garden and uh, they sang My Adidas and the crowd ripped off their shoes and held them up and it was, it was this awesome cultural moment. And so they've had a big impact on me and my generation and they're wildly successful uh, with the teens and they're growing. I don't know if you guys have ever been up to Portland, but their, their US headquarters is absolutely exploding right now. Um, uh, one of the main reasons why I think they're exploding though is because of all of the video that is in the marketplace today. Dear Adidas, we believe that through sport, we have the power to change lives. What if we took some trash and made a sports shoe out of it? And then we made a million more from 11 million plastic bottles. This three-dimensional mesh structure, it's a lattice, it's a matrix, it's a web of individual elements. Each one of those little elements is tuned specifically for a purpose. <laughs> Ultimate skill of 3000 here. This guy, you got some mad skills. In the edit suite. My life was a mess, but I fought that. Now it's time to finesse. Ooh, the boys got fabulous rhymes. You were already my brightest star. MVP, baby! Step back three. Bottom. This is Ultra Boost 19, the best running shoe in the world. Well, for now. something of more value to be running and not in fear. However you feel in that moment that you meet up with another individual, that's really what you're gonna create. Now over to you. Cool, so I'd like to welcome to the stage uh, my friend Tom Ramsden. He's the Senior Director of Brand Communications for Adidas. Come on up, Tom. <laughs> Should we stand over here? What's that? Should we stand over here? Today? Yeah, let's do this. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, Tom, why don't you tell a little bit uh, about what you do at Adidas, how you integrate into all of this madness, yeah. and how do you tackle all of these different videos? Because as we saw in the last clip, there's everything from designing a shoe and the intricacies of that to celebrities. It's, it's just a ton of content to manage. So if you could. It's not a ton of content. It's a shitload of content. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of overwhelming. My uh, job. To give a little bit more context is that my official title is Senior Director for Brand Communications in North America, which means that essentially I have a hand in all of the individual categories that we've got, whether it's basketball or running or action sports or all of these different categories, have, as well as all the kind of horizontal initiatives that we have, in addition like Parlay that you saw mentioned earlier. Uh, and the challenge for us 
is to uh, manage all of these different pieces of content, develop them all, and make sure that they land in the right places, basically. One of the biggest um, opportunities that we have is that um, one of the things that we wanted to highlight with that film, which is kind of roughly cut together, is just the diversity of content that we do have. There's stuff that's pretty dry for a lot of people if you talk about real shoe technologies and how those things are made, but there's a real purpose behind that one. And at the same time, you see things like skateboarding videos, which is literally us contributing to the culture of skateboarding culture at the same time. I said culture about a thousand times in one sentence, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but the point is there's so much variation in that that we have to try to make sure that we line it up at the right time with the right people, uh, but above all, make sure that it kind of adds value to their experience. Um, what we tend to do sometimes is look at like general metrics, I suppose, and say, okay, what's the, um, and tar them all with the same brush, and that's basically the last thing we can do with the kind of content that you just saw in that little medley. When we were talking earlier this week, you had mentioned something about healthy tension, right? Within the organization, you have media-driven, you have creative-driven, there's a healthy tension in your yeah, yeah. So I, t t tell the audience a little bit about that. Yeah, so I suppose I'm one half of kind of this two-headed monster, and the other half of that monster is uh, a guy called Chris Murphy, who Chip and the team usually deals with. Chris is in charge of digital activation. Chris is really judged by a lot of the tangible metrics that we normally have, basically. You guys know it, so I don't want to kind of patronize you with all of those things. My responsibility is to the brand and brand perception, and so we have this kind of, he's looking at how can you make sure that we're getting exactly the right kind of qualified traffic, or make sure that we're getting the right kind of video through rate, and kind of informing all the things that we have there. My responsibility is to look at how do we make sure that people think and feel about us in the right way. And honestly, I mean, like I kind of, in the content that we produce, not me, I suppose, but the whole team has the keys to the way that Chris and the digital activation team can kind of cook the books, basically. The, the idea of like video uh, completion rate or video through rate is purely based on the assumption that when you get to the end of it, you've made your point. Well, okay, I can cheat that because I can make my video seven seconds long and pretty you know, much guarantee that everyone will sort of get there or five seconds long. Yeah. And he's going to go, great, our video of through rate was through the roof. So he and I have this thing where we are kind of uh, a yin and yang partnership that has to really collaborate to make sure that we look after the metrics that drive the business, the things that is kind of the daily reports that we get, but also a little bit of a long-term look on kind of the way that the brand comes across. Right on. So culture is a big part of Adidas. It's always been a part of storytelling for Adidas. Um, talk a little bit about culture, and I think we've got some videos um, that we can show how you guys have executed that, but how important is that to Adidas? I mean, we've seen it through generations, but how do you look at it? What's your lens? Yeah, it's massive. I think one of the, the, the differences that Adidas has as a brand, uh, and something that we've kind of, I would say, accelerated and really ramped up and, and called out, <laughs> in recent times this idea of like open source and not in the tech sense uh, that was mentioned earlier but in the idea of like open the doors, let people in, let people kind of fuck around with your brand a little bit uh, and create something new with it for themselves. This weird uh, image behind you I wanted to kind of highlight as something that we did last year in LA around All Star Weekend which was essentially a festival of kind of creativity in basketball for two days. 20,000 people came through the doors and went through kind of product experiences, saw music shows, were able to play basketball, were able to go into a maker lab where people were able to kind of create their own version, their own prototype shoes by just messing with all the tools that we have that we make our own shoes with. And so that's an example of us kind of not necessarily defining and saying, hey, this is our version, this is the story that we want to tell you, but actually this is our brand proposition and you can kind of tell your own story with it. Yeah. So I know the agenda is obviously largely about like tell your brand story and our brand story, part of that is being open source and letting people go to propagate or create on their own. Cool. Do you want to tee up um, Parlay before we run that video? Yeah, I think, thank you for prompting me on the thing that I forgot. Uh, <laughs> The, uh, it, so this is one example where we were talking about kind of the culture and basketball and, and obviously it probably goes without saying that one of the main objectives of the brand is to help people, athletes specifically perform better in whatever sport they're uh, undertaking. But one of the biggest pieces of that is also taking a look at 
the society in which people live and the planet that we all, all live on and trying to make sure that we make a contribution to that at the same time. Cool, I'll run the video. <laughs> Really, like, not uh, just to jump in, it's not something that, you know, that, that it's something that was cooked up and originally started with like 100 pairs of this idea of how could we recycle and intercept pro, uh, plastic going into the ocean. It's now a multi million pair franchise, and so the idea of just like, let's try and see where this can go has really turned into something else. And that, I think, of the nature of Adidas as a kind of trying to be a uh, creator brand as we define it. Is a, it, uh, Palais is a great example of that, something that took us from somewhere that was just an idea and actually uh, gathered steam. Nice. Gathered steam? Gathered momentum? Momentum. Who knows? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so shifting gears a little bit into measurement, uh, we've talked about it, I think, earlier today, but like, you know, we're all looking to create content. We know that that's a successful long-term strategy. It's not always easy to get those funded. You know, sometimes you have to show immediate results versus long-term results. So talk a little bit about measurement and how it applies to Adidas. Yeah, I think I spoke to her a little bit earlier about the, the kind of yin and yang of, yeah. of that. And uh, there's this idea that uh, kind of a lot of it boils down to net promoter score for us, brand momentum, some of those metrics that, that you can't immediately get a, a response on through kind of uh, you know, traditional metrics, let's say, not traditional current metrics. And so we need to kind of take a look at those things and make sure that we're constantly optimizing. Uh, one of the biggest challenges that we have is that if you imagine just big picture for a second, like the marketing mix of Adidas, like many of the brands here and, and beyond, is enormous, right? From athletes, sponsorships, partnerships, um, retail footprint, all of these other components, there's, there's, it's an enormous thing. So we, let's, we have to try to, the attribution of that is extremely difficult to figure out. So we look at the kind of the microcosm of content and our uh, output there. And so there's two kind of things at hand here. Number one is within the bubble that we're operating today is how do we constantly optimize within that one? And our obligation is to say, well, let's make sure that we are constantly trying to make sure that we're getting the best brand return and also the best kind of business and other metrics that we look at. The second piece of this, though, is that our obligation to deliver on the brand proposition is that we break the bubble of what we're doing in existing kind of formats, I suppose. This example here, the, the, just the logo, is an initiative that we did with Twitter around Friday Night Stripes, which was literally uh, live streaming high school football. And by that, I mean... American football, and by that, <laughs> I, I mean uh, egg chasing or throw ball, whatever, not, not soccer. <laughs> but you guys get it anyway with Friday Night Stripe. So, um, and then, but our obligation is to, to move into spaces that are new at the same time. And then when you go and do something like that, it's really hard to know what is going to define success. And we get so much out of that in so many ways from kind of just the brand initiative and what it says about us and the actions that we're taking instead of just the content that we're putting out as well as the content and all of the other metrics that are behind that. So those are things that, that optimizing within what we've got and then making sure that we kind of burst out of the bubble to, to really try new things as well. Cool. What are the things working with Adidas over the years? Um, a brand for creators by creators. That's always been a theme in everything that we've worked through. I think it's particularly important for this audience. Talk a little bit about that. Um, yeah. Uh, the, there's a couple of things that like have, it, it's not something new that we've arrived at and it was intrinsically built into the brand. And we, you yeah. started by talking about Run DMC yeah. and those kids and that shoe that they were all holding up was a basketball shoe. It was the best technical shoe that you would play basketball in in the, in the 70s. Kids appropriated that for their own lifestyles and there's something weird and kind of magical in that moment of going like, we, nobody kind of tried to quell that or do something to change it. It just let it happen organically. That's, that's what came from it. And so that proposition of kind of maintaining that status of kind of being inclusive, letting people take the brand and express themselves with it in different ways, 
has really led to some different ways of thinking, and, and we've galvanized that more recently. And big uh, kudos to the team that, that worked on this initiative that we're going to show you. Um, I, uh, uh, Bo showed earlier in the Famebit presentation the idea of um, you know, unboxing as one, was one of the pillars, and I was yeah. saying, well, actually, you know, I, I, how do we make people tell their own story? How can we make their story better, yeah. but not necessarily kind of demand what the story is and say, hey, this is just the general, just take it, let's start something, and you, got, you take it where you want, so I think we just want to... Yeah, we're going to roll this video, and then thank you guys. Check this video out. So earlier today, I got a text message from my friend Nick saying, Dude, you're famous. Of course, I replied with, but then he said, and I was just like, holy sh**. So now I'm on my way to Hollywood to see the song. I just made it to Hollywood. They said the sign is on the corner of Vine and Selma. I don't see it yet. When I started doing YouTube, you never imagined that you would see your name on a billboard, and that's exactly what's happening. So if you guys look right behind me, right there, that's my name. Yo, right there, right freaking there. So I guess I should do what the billboard says and go to the Adidas store on Melrose and see exactly what it is they have for me. Continue on Melrose Avenue for two miles. So that's it. I'd like to thank Tom and Adidas for coming up on stage and giving back to the community. Thank you all very much for hanging out with us for 15 minutes. Thanks for having us.